Hi, everybody. Will here with this week's interview chair. I have to tell you, this is a fun one. This is the first part of a two-part interview with Mr. Gabriel Rangel. Enjoy the first part. Hi, everybody. A special guest today on the interview chair. We have Mr. Gabriel Rangel. How are you, Gabe? Hi, hi, Will. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. It's been a long time. I saw pictures of you, but I haven't seen you. So, yeah. So, uh, things are you're keeping busy by the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah. We just started getting, uh, you know, back to showing normally, still, you know, lots of changes, but, you know, mm-hmm. I think it's going to be fine. How's Yvonne? She good? Yeah, she's one is good. Thank you. Excellent. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, first question is, I want to know how you got involved in the sport of dogs and how old were you when that happened? Um, I was somewhere 12 to 14 years old and um, never really got involved in any uh, show dogs or purebred dogs, but, you know, I always loved dogs and you know, spend time with dogs and, you know, just pets and stuff from neighbors. And I couldn't have a dog because I was, you know, going to, um, the really main, uh, reason why I got involved into the dogs is I was watching a movie, a Disney movie named the ugly Dachshund. Okay. I don't know if you've seen that movie. No, I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. Same time they have that what the Irish said is red. Yeah, big red. Yeah, the same, you know. And uh, it's uh, involved, it has some show dogs, and and uh, it's a scene of a, a family that, you know, raising dachshunds and for some reason got adopted, uh, adopted, adopt uh, a Great Danes, and that's what they call it, the ugly dachshund. But in the end, it is a scene of the dog show and people showing dogs. And uh, I just loved it. I thought it was like incredible. You know, I never saw anything like that. And then walking back from school one time, I went from a from a place that I never, you know, usually take a bus, go back to school, go back to uh, my, my place. And uh, um, we, uh, I went the wrong way. You know, I started walking different ways back home. And I saw this big store. They had like a lot of pets, like uh, birds and dog food and stuff. So I stopped by and and uh, saw the, the it was empty, you know, like uh, there's nobody there. It's closed. So the next day I feel curious and I go back. And my big surprise was that it was this guy day there. And in the corner of the store, it had this beautiful great thing female lay down with puppies. Oh, oh. And uh, I mean, that was my love, the Danes. And uh, I didn't know I thought, that. Pardon? I didn't know that. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. No, that's how, you know, the first thing. So I become his friend, you know, like a little kid and just going to the store and obviously wanted to have one. And uh, to make a long story short, then uh, I began close that he allowed me to just kind of make payments and stuff. And I got a puppy from him. So that was my first uh, intent. And then I realized uh, that he was a handler and he was showing dogs. And at one time, just being there, spending time with him, uh, a couple of people came and it was talking to him about going to the dog show and get the dogs ready and stuff. And I'm like, what do you mean getting them ready? You know? So I hear them talk about conditioning the dogs and exercising the dogs, uh, you know, feed them different kinds of vitamins. And, you know, all of this was fascinating to me. 
Mm, for sure. In, uh, so I start doing that with my puppy without, you know, I just kind of whatever I listen, I went back and did it. Apparently, he gave me a puppy that wasn't like the best. Uh, but I think I made it the best by did what I was doing with him. And uh, so I brought the dog and I said, uh, I want you to see my, 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 you know, bitch. And he said, uh, oh, is he look all right? And, and I said, well, you know, you take a look at her, you know. So he, he was shocked the way, you know, when I brought it, it was a beautiful weight and uh, had a perfect top line. And I mean, she was very nice. But now I see in pictures and I know it was because everything I did, which that's kind of like what I loved, the change that I made on the dog. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, he invited me to go to the first talk show. And, um, and that's how I started with him. And uh, I loved it. I mean, as soon as I drove into the dog show, I saw this the rings and everything. I mean, I was like, like a little kid in a hand, you know, like a candy store. Sure. Yeah. So, so I loved it. I mean, I knew that was it for me. And uh, so I became his good friend. I met many other people that uh, helped me along. And I don't know, you remember Sergio? I, I, oh, for sure. He was a fabulous guy. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he was really, I mean, he was a very close friend of mine. And he, uh, you know, like always um, in, uh, encouraged me to do it, you know? And uh, so I started with his smooths. Also, I, I, I had a, as a friend at the same time another person that bred bulldogs. So I got involved with a lot of the bulldogs. So I show many bulldogs, like, and um, so I never was a professional handler or anything, but my, all my friends were either had a professional handler showing the dog or I was with my friend. So I was exposed to all of that. Then uh, just, you know, one thing led to another one and, just got deeper into it. And one time, this lady, you know, I don't know if you know her, but it's, her name is Joey Kelly. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and he had all English. Yep. And uh, she came to the dog shows in Mexico. And uh, did we have in those days, we have uh, in summer and the, uh, like Christmas time, international shows. So we, uh, uh, we see a lot of people coming from the United States to the show. And one thing that was my friend, his name was Leopoldo, El Pollo, we say. Um, he had an old English, but it wasn't like Joyce. You know, it was all like, <laughs> you know, not done up, not groomed, no nothing. So he used to do a lot of winning with that dog. It was a nice moving dog probably incorrect, but he was such a great moving dog. And uh, so he won a lot of best shows with him. But every time J- Joey came to that dog, or any dog, he'll, he'll beat him. And we was like, how can that be, you know? But I was so impressed of the way he was presented. And I, I just said to myself, I want to learn that. You know, I want to learn how to make that dog look like that. So we asked her to see if he can work on my friend's dog. And, uh, but she did, you know, she make a big change of it. But, you know, you, uh, it, it just, like we all know, it takes a big uh, effort and, con- you know, being constant with the same grooming to make it look in that condition. Right. You can't just make it once looking like that. But um, so I got very curious. And I wanted to go and and uh, uh, and learn from her. You know, I just wanted to make it look like that. So I went with her, spent a couple of months. And, How uh, old were you then, Gabe? Uh, uh, 19, 20, something like that. And um, 
So it was very nice. But to be honest, it was a little bit like she went to work and it was, we live in Fort Worth. And it was nothing in there for me. Like it was just a kennel and it was no people, nothing. So I was kind of lonely. I got some homesick, you know, mm-hmm. but, I, but I learned the dogs were good. And, you know, I, you know, I, I learned a lot about it. And, and I went to a couple of shows with her and uh, it was very nice. But, you know, I went home and then after I got home, um, uh, my friend Sergio wanted to go and buy a smooth fox terrier to the shows in Texas, the forward shows they have the specialties when, you know, terrier specialties. Mm-hmm. And stuff. Then we went there and uh, decided that um, we wanted to get, we wanted to be as our idea more than anything else. So we just wanted to see what dogs we like without anybody telling us anything and see if we can get get it right and, and we're doing good. So locally, we pick up the dog that won Best of Winners. The least Tobin was showing, Dick Tracy. Okay. And, uh, and there's another dog was... Uh, Named the one they won the breed was Two Fox the Coroner. It's also a very famous dog. And Mrs. Clark was judging the, the, the breed. So we have a private experience going to the shows in Detroit when it was a tournament of champions. And I remember we took a bulldog there. I'm getting off of the conversation a little bit, but because um, when they start judging, and we were invited with this bulldog that we won uh, in Mexico, top dog, so my friend and I, my other friend, and I was so impressed when I saw Mrs. Clark for the first time. You know, she was there with eight other judges, but the way she was touching the dogs, judging them, acknowledged the other judges to come over and, do their part. I was so impressed with her. And uh, so that was my impression of Mrs. Clark, right? Right away. Then um, back to forward, she was judging there. So I saw it and I recognized her. And I said to my friend, I said, I said, Sergio, whatever she does, I said, we get that dog because she's <laughs> so good. Yeah. I said, so... So we kind of like did that, and um, and we uh, write down a couple of notes in the catalog, went back home, and then make a call Betsy does it, which is the kennel uh, owner, and uh, we went to visit her to Texas. And uh, when we went there, uh, she had a bunch of smooths and uh, puppies, and uh, you know, like maybe 15, 20 dogs, but it wasn't really, she, she didn't want to sell the dog that won the specialty. Mm-hmm. And um, so we're just trying to look to find something. She uh, also had this beautiful English bitch. Um, and uh, I loved her. I mean, I didn't really know much about them, but my eye was telling me how elegant and beautiful she was. So I said to Sergio, I said, well, we don't, we can't get this dog. Maybe just tell her when he breeds this dog to this bitch, we can get something. So he says, okay, you know, well, we don't want a puppy. We just want a dog to show, right? So the story is that we, we uh, stay with her, and um, she, after she shows all the dogs to us, we go back, we go into bed, and, and I feel a little thirsty, you know, and I feel like maybe I should uh, find the kitchen and get some water or something. So I go down. I, no, but, I mean, it's not my house. I don't know what nothing is. So I'm wandering around a little bit and downstairs, and I ended into... The 
um, not like a puppy room, like some like a, the laundry room. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so I get to open the door and I see this like little baby gate, and there's this puppy comes around, the beautiful puppy, you know, with the uh, white body and a tan head. And I said, I didn't see it. We didn't see this puppy. So anyway, we saw it. I looked at it. And um, the next morning, we asked Betsy, I said, well, what about that puppy that you have there? So the husband, Bill, says, uh, well, that's my puppy. He said, this is not anything for us to. This, this puppy is going to give us all the trophies that we want. So we can't sell you this puppy. So I'm like, we're like kind of, okay, well, if you ever decided to sell it, then uh, let us know. So uh, that was when I still in Mexico like that. So when I visit them that time, they have this dog, they won the specialty. And he was like a like wild dog, like you know, it was like hard to show. So she said, "Can you take a video? I mean, you know, uh, can you like walk him around and handle him so I can take a video?" I never had a chance to take a video. So whatever I did, she videotaped me, and she liked what he saw me doing with the dogs and make him walk and make him do whatever. I mean, I used to show. Rottweilers and Dobermans and stuff, you know. I mean, I think this little dog was not gonna uh, walk for me, right? So, <laughs> so I did that, and she was so impressed with me. She called this handler, Danny Sackos, in California, and and told him, you know, you should call this kid and uh, have him come and help you because he has good hands. So that that's really how I came to California and started doing that with wow. us. So, you know, did you, what, what smooth did you take home? Well, I, I we didn't take any smooth home because we didn't the one we wanted they didn't want to sell, and later on, um, when I went back to this is before Joy Kelly. So after that, I went with Joey Kelly and I saw uh, this same lady with the smooths showing in Chicago, so the, the father. So I helped her there and I showed her, I think I got best opposite of the specialty or something. And um, I think he, she said that the judge didn't like her, and, but the dog is very nice. So she gave it a try. Maybe she'll find it like that. And I got best ups <laughs> and, uh, and that was fine, you know? So, but she was very impressed with that. So then Danny uh, called Sergio because he thought that I was working for him. And um, so we, um, um, you know, we thought we can, I can go and learn from him. And, but I said, you know, I, I just know that it's kind of hard and, I don't know what the situation is, so I don't want to promise you anything. What about just give him like three months and see how it goes? If i happy, you happy, then we can make it longer. So when we did that, um, we had, uh, what was it, in June, July, somewhere there, Montgomery County is coming up. So she mentioned to me then that they were going to show that puppy that the, in Montgomery in the sweepstakes. It was a big deal, and that was the big debut. And um, the dog from England, the, the breeder from England, uh, Peter Winfield, they had Ryber Smooth Fosters, was a very famous smooth breeder. Uh, he was going to come and show the puppy because the mother was his. So I went to Montgomery with Danny, my first Montgomery. And this is like in 86. And um, I kind of remember that she said that they were going to show this puppy. So I went by and I 
saw that it was over and I saw them staring at the dog in the pen, in the X pen, and they were kind of sad. So I said, hey, what happened? How do, how do you guys do? So he told me that, well, we didn't win. So we're kind of disappointed. I look at the dog and it had like a rash in top, like red marks, like, you know, when they leak a lot and yep, stuff. Yep. And he looked a little bit uh, open leg and kind of skinny body. And, and, you know, it wasn't really a good time for the dog, I guess. You know, it just didn't look right. But I, it just looked like he was just going to grow into something really nice. So I always liked the puppy. <laughs> And uh, so I said to them, well, well, so do you want to sell it? So Bill comes to me and he says, are you still interested? I said, well, it doesn't look very good right now, I said, but, but yes, I love the parents. So we bought that two fox white hunter. That was him. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, Went back, I called my friend, and he says, well, I think it says $4,000 or something like that, which, you know, it was a lot of money for a smooth fox terrier puppy. But I was so excited, I, didn't re- I wasn't really thinking about it. I said, okay, you have to shake my hand. If you shake my hand, you can go back and you work. So that's what I did. But then I had to call my friend and tell him that, we just bought this puppy, or I bought this puppy <laughs> for him for four thousand dollars, and uh, so he's like, "I called them and I say, hey, sir, you listen, uh, we got this uh, beautiful puppy.' Is what puppy?" So I remind remind him, and he says, "Oh, okay, well that's good. Is he really nice?" I said, "Well, I, I, it's going to be beautiful." So we just had to. I told him, and you know. I didn't want to back up, so uh, I I just bought it. So you just need to send him a check. So he says, "Oh, okay. Well, I'll send him the check." I said, "How much? How much is it?" So I told him, "Oh my God, he almost killed me." <laughs> He's like, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> but anyway, you know, it turned out good for my yeah. sake. Oh, for sure. And uh, so then, this is my first experience. The same year, they send the dog to Danny Sacros to show. And uh, Danny Sacros had, a, at that time, a smooth fox there named uh, High, De- High Desert Dandy, Dandy Dandy Andy or something like that. It was the number one smooth. And uh, he probably would have had a big commitment with the owner and uh, to show him and win and campaign him, you know. So when we came with Hunter, I mean, he was a beautiful puppy. And we showed him the first time to, to take him to the garden as a class dog. But those days you needed a major or something, right? Mm-hmm. So we showed him, got the major. I showed the, he gets me the dog. He shows that wins the, the, the winner's dog and take him back for the breed. And he, and in those days, we have, you know, Woody, Clay, you know, all of those guys, you know, tough handlers with the smooth. Like everybody got a smooth. 80 boys, everybody. So we we go there and he loses, uh, he doesn't win with the dog. And he was winning, you know, like pretty consistently. So he, the owner got a little upset because he says, you know, you have this other dog. Now you're winning with it then you take away from this one, you know, it's going to make it more difficult. It's already difficult as it is. So he promised the owner not, not, not to show other dogs in the same breed, and that was that. So I guess it was okay. So then I, he told me that. He says, you know, you, you, we're going to take it to New York, but I can't show it. So you need to tell Sergio that my situation. And I said, well, sure. So, so I mean, I don't know how my friend was going to feel about this because, you know, he's paying him to do it for who he is. And um, anyway, so we went to the specialties that used to be in 
in the, that gym, remember? Uh, Terry Specialties, right before the garden. Okay, yeah. Yep. yeah, they have Irish and all kinds of specialties. Yep. And, um, yes. So then I, I went there with, with uh, Danny. We show a couple of Irish and we show the smooth puppy. So Sergio flies uh, from Mexico and, uh, you know, he wants to see the dog, whatever. So he never really seen the dog since that time. And uh, he liked it very much. He says, well, he says, you know, if you think we can win a ribbon or something because that can make the trip worth it, you know? I said, uh, well, let's hope so. You know, he's never been in the ring, so we just had to go for it. I never shown it or anything, so I, I don't know. I said, well, let's hope so. And then he was like 10 months old, and we decided to put it in the open class. Well, those, those days, I, my English was really limited. And, uh, you know, I just enough to go by. And um, so we showed him. And uh, we had to tell this guy that this his handlers can't show his dog at the national. So he says, "That's fine, you know, whatever. You just show it. That's fine." So I go in the open class with this puppy, and there were probably 15, 20 open dogs. So I won the class, and. Uh, you know, he was so happy with that. Then, you know, we just go immediately into winners. Then I got winners though with him. And that was like a big weight out of my shoulders, you know? And it was like, you know, very nice. My first experience, really. And um, so then with the breed came, uh, there's a bunch of smooths. I mean, there were more than a hundred smooths. Um, I think Peter was showing... Uh, Gossel Excellence and, you know, all of, you know, George, Clay had George. Uh, and um, so everybody's there. So everybody had a smooth. So it's a very good uh, entry. And uh, I'm just going there to just, uh, you know, have no idea of anything, just trying to do the best job I could for my friend. So to make a long story short, this guy gives me the national with this puppy. And uh, um, Janie Forsythe uh, came to, to us and he started telling him that I he wanted to buy this dog. He wanted to buy it from uh, the lady with the, um, oh my God, uh, Fox. Uh, boy. Fox the Fox Den? Yeah, Fox Den Kennels. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, I wanted to see it, make sure that this lady owns this dog because he's a beautiful dog, right? Anyway, that was the beginning with that. My first was means that I got to win this with this dog. So oh, my my clients, uh, they, uh, my friend, uh, Danny Sacco's clients, they were really upset. They really thought that that was no good. Obviously, he didn't win. So the next day, uh, we had to do the same thing, you know, at the garden. And uh, so I go in the same thing. And he wins winner's dog. Then it's time for the breed. And uh, Danny just looks at me like, I hope you don't win again because I'm going to get fired, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, we're like, in another way, I see my friend jumping up in the, you know, uh, the chairs over there on top of the chair, so happy. So anyway, we're going, I ended winning the breed again with this class stuff. So that's my first experience. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, I've never been here. Not, I mean, I, I, now you realize how difficult and how lucky and how everything had to be right, right. for you to have somebody, you know, like me that, you know, never been anywhere to do that. That's, you know, it says a lot about 
you know, the great abandon it is, the Westminster, you know, mm. and the judge that didn't really have all these handlers, all these people, and he didn't care. So uh, that was a wonderful experience. And uh, that's really my beginning. And then I, from then on, I was like, not even thinking about going home, you know, just keep learning and and stripping and do whatever Danny told me to do. How long did you stay with Danny? Maybe like three or four years. Oh, okay. And where'd you go from there, from Danny? Well, uh, then, you know, we just uh, got to the point that we wanted to move on. I always got along with Danny, you know. I mean, he, he, you know, he... I, is he taught me a lot of things, and uh, um, I really considered him uh, my mentor. And uh, uh, I'm very grateful for a lot of things that he explained me. You know how to do right and not use things that cut the hair, and you know use your fingers, and you know all of that good stuff that stays with you forever. You know, right. like it's your base. And uh, uh, when I was with him, uh, you know, sometimes you get a little stressed out, tired. And I always like to go and see Kerry Blues. I love Kerry Blues. And um, and Bill McFan always was really friendly with me. And, you know, I like to talk to him. So when I even have a little stressful time, I always go see Bill. You know, he's always like, he's going to cut me down. He's going to talk to me about, you know, dogs or whatever. And I'm going to forget about it. So I always go and visit him. And he always had beautiful carry blues. So I was watching trimming it and talk to him. And so every time he had a new carry blue, he always comes and, or mentioned to me that, uh, hey, Gabe, you know, I had this new carry. So he'll show me his carry, and, you know, that was it, nothing else. Well, one time, closer to, to when I left Danny, he says to me, hey, Gabe, I really want to show you something. I had a really nice carry blue. I'm very excited about it. And, and um I said, okay, so come and show me. And it shows me this dog that is being clipper all over. And he only has maybe one inch of hair all over. But that was Hatsper. Remember Hatsper? Yep. And, uh, and he was like, I mean, you can see his feet, his hocks, his out. I mean, air like a smooth. It was so beautiful to me. But they had no hair, you know. So I was like shocked. I said, what happened to his hair? Well, now he told me that he was going to grow it and show Well, I loved him since that. So when I left Danny, I uh, wanted to, to um, you know, I was thinking about it. What I wanted to do something a little different, in terriers too. But, you know, like Danny didn't show a lot of, breeds a bill show. So, and also, um, you know, they were really interested in like Cairns and Westies and Cary Blues and things like that. Wheatons. And, um, and then Taffy, of course, had the poodles and stuff, so that was great to have, do that too. And um, so I went to, to a dog show and then uh, I decided that I was going to ask him if I can go with them. So I called them and I said, uh, hey, Bill, you know, he was just talking to me like we talk all the time. So I told them, and he was very happy when I heard that and he was looking forward to do it. And so I went with Bill and stayed hey, three years with him, something like that. How old were you when you when you went with Bill? Uh, let me see, maybe 25. Okay. Somewhere there. And you were there for three years. Yeah. Yeah, I was there, hold on, maybe a little older. Because um, I remember I was, I turned 30 when I was with him. Okay. Yeah. So that was, uh, yeah. 
92, <laughs> somewhere there. Oh, wow. <laughs> but but uh, um, I had a great time with him. I had so many good stories. I mean, I can write a book about Bill with going to doctors. With oh, him. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just going to tell you one because I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> but uh, is one time we show in Hatsburg. And we go to these shows. Uh, he says to me that he wanted to show the dog in Kansas City, those Heart of America dog shows, because the famous breeder of Melvis Kennel mm-hmm. is there. And he wanted to show uh, the dog to her and just visit her. So, okay, you know, I I, I, um, I never really were, were, was a person that it was really gossipy and involved in everything, you know. I just, whatever they told me, that's what I knew, and that's it. So that's what I remember. And um, so we went to the show. We took, like, maybe five dogs. We flew there. And uh, the day of the big show, um, they started the groups late, like, I think, four or five, maybe even six. It was late. So we had a lot of time after we finished showing the dogs. We won a couple of breeds. So Bill says, you know, let's just, just have some lunch somewhere, you know? I mean, just tired of eating the same stuff here. It's not so healthy. And I said, okay, well, whatever. So, you know, we take the car, drive out of the fairgrounds, and um, we had lunch, and we driving back. So on the way back, the train goes in front, like, you know, put the tracks, you know, they put the, the bar that goes down the down, prevent yeah. you for coming through. So I'm like, right before, I'm like, okay, well, right in the middle, well in the middle of the, you know, five lane road. So, um, and, you know, we just ate, so we're all like tired and stuff. And this train just started going and going and going. And I mean, I never waited so long. Uh, I was just, I watched Bill, and he's like falling asleep in the wheel, waiting. So I'm like, no, don't fall asleep. Oh, no, 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 I'm not going to fall asleep. So, I mean, it was so long, Will. I mean, we've been there for like 20 or 30 minutes, and the train's still going by. Like, it was just a long time. So I fall asleep in the passenger side. So I'm like that, right? And then all of a sudden I open my eyes and I see outside the window and I see all these people staring at the car. So I'm like, then I'm like, turn around and I see Bill is passed out. So I look and I realize that we are the only car in the middle of the street with cars going past, it's slowing down, knowing what is happening here. We, I don't know how long we were there. Maybe for a long time. <laughs> so fall asleep, look at the little bell, and it just wakes up like, yeah. I said, you fall asleep. Oh, my God. And I, and I look at my watch, and it was like maybe 30 minutes for the Terry group. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, Bill. We got to go. <laughs> so I'm, we're like going like crazy. We parked the car. I don't know what we did with the car. We, I just ran into the entrance to the building. He dropped me. I went literally just to get Hotspur out of the crate. And he had a wonderful coat. And it was just, you know, amazing dog. So I got it out. I really did just brush his beard. Put a little water. I didn't even touch it. Just the way it came out of the crib. And Bill coming, running back from parking the car. I gave him the dog. Goes into the crib. Boom. I mean, I looked at the dog and it's like, he looked like he's like perfectly fine, you know? So, of course, we win the group with him and go best in show. But they were this close to miss that. You're missing the terrier group. <laughs> the terrier group. Can you imagine sleeping? Oh my god! That's but that was, you know, he's uh, he's a very lucky man, and uh, <laughs> he's always uh, 
you know, things like that happen to him, you know, work out and things like that. So I had a lot of fun with him. I'm I sure. still do. I mean, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah, he's a great guy. <laughs> so after you left Bills, were you on your own then? Is that when you guys started? Well, when I, uh, uh, I also, my friend Sergio start um, having some wires with Rick as a co-owner. And they own a couple of dogs. He even, uh, I think he owned George the oh, last wow. time was shown. In the end, Rick wanted to take him to the garden. And um, uh, uh, so I think they showed him and I think won the breed with, uh, with him. And um, like I said, you know, I, I always was there, but I never really care about what's going on with things that, you know, like that. So um, he he owned the dog and he showed it one that I think one fought in the group or something. And um, I think Rick just loved the dog and, you know, whatever happened with him, he just wanted to show the world that the dog is, is fine, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That is, you know, I remember all that. Okay, if he was something wrong, there is nothing wrong right now. So, so I don't know what was the deal, but that's what the only thing he had. And uh, so he won the breed with him under Derek Rain, and uh, he was very proud about it. And that's it. So we, um, I lost track of what we were saying before that. Um, you're you're on your own, but then you you went. To yeah. Some, well, you- so we had. Um, uh, the reason I mentioned that is because I become pretty close with him, you know, uh, you know, I got a couple of dogs for him that he wanted to work with it. So I just become a really close, um, um, person next to me. And, uh, he, I remember when I show Hunter in the garden, he was one of the first ones to came and say, you know, uh, you know, just start telling me how good a job I did and very encouraging. And I knew who he was. And I thought it was very nice for him to make time and do it just me feel really good. And um uh so I did that. So when uh when with the uh, got such a good relationship with Rick, uh um then um we, um, I think Sergio didn't want to do it anymore and told him that he was going to, you know, I think he's going to get in a little sick or something, you know, but something happened that they stand that they couldn't go on those anymore like that. Uh, that he had to take a break. So, um, Rick, uh, I think got partnership with Kathy Regis at that time. So then after they show for a while, Rick always liked me and saw me working with Bill and, you know, getting hats ready for Bill. And he loved that. You know, he always, you know, was very nice to me, make good comments that, you know, he liked me. And um, so he, uh, I think he uh, told Kathy to, you should hire him to show your dogs. Uh, so she approached me and he told me that if I was interested to work for her. So uh, uh, what I said to her is that, well, I'm not sure. I'm not a professional handler. But I mean, and then I had like seven, eight years working for handlers already. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he says, let me think about it. So Rick called me and that's telling me you should do it and all of this, right? But I talked to Yvonne. And Yvonne, uh, you know, we just decided whatever we'll do it, we'll do it together. You know, like if you, you think it's okay and you want to do it, just do it. So I decided to do it. And I told her that, uh, you know, I didn't have any uh, any plans. So I need to get my, uh, you know, a legal status and, you know, to, to start a business, you know, to do a business. Well, so she hired a lawyer and, you know, got everything done and we got my green card and um, I started working for her basically in my own, but I was really working for her only. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, so we shot a lot of wires. And I mean, it was a great time. You know, I mean, we did everything you can do. I mean, we were so lucky. And between Rick and his knowledge and um, her, her love for the wires and, and all of that, and, and I might so eager to do something with them. We did very good. So that was my first, and uh, kind of like in my own, but when when she uh, realized that it was just, she told me, you know, you can just, if you want to get more clients, you go ahead, you can do whatever. Because I was working in her kennel, and uh, she said, you know, as long as... Uh, um, you know, I don't have no responsibilities or anything. You take care of them and everything is fine. You can be more clients. And, and as long as when the time comes, if I have a good dog, you should, you show it for me, not, not your clients, other clients. Mm-hmm. So we agree with that. And we went like that for like three years. So really started getting too, uh, uh, too many dogs, you know, and, um, so I decided that we should probably get our own place. And that was in like uh, maybe 90, like 92, 93, somewhere there. We uh, we went into our own, like really in our own, like just, just uh, you know, no, no conditions of working for anybody privately or anything. So, yeah, that's what I did. And then uh, since then on, you know. We haven't stopped. <laughs> well, let, let's. What about uh, when did Sadie come along? Sadie. Well, that's another thing. Uh, you know, um, uh, because my relationship with Rick. I, of course, I met all these famous handlers. You know, like George Ward and Peter, and you know, you know the the guys that were way before us and. Um, so I always was fascinated with all the history of of what's who was who and stuff, you know, in in that point. So um <clears throat> when I uh uh have such a close relationship with Rick, um he told me when you start in your own, I want you to go and visit my friend Peter. And uh and I said, well, but I can't just walk to, you know, to call Peter, I'm coming, you know? I mean, he's always been a wonderful man and always very nice to me, but I don't really know him that well, <clears throat> that way. So that's how um, I think Rick asked him to, you know, you know, hey, take a look at this guy and, you know, help him. And, you know, if he wants to go east, tell him what to do or whatever. Well, that was a, uh, all of a sudden, Peter calls me and says, hey, Gabe, I heard that you wanted to come and, you know, you're welcome to come in my house. I mean, I can cry about telling you this. He is a wonderful man. Yeah, yes. He always helped. He always wanted to do everything. And um, so I decided to go to my first Montgomery in, uh, in my own. So he's like, when are you coming? And I said, well, you know, I told him, I, oh, no, no, okay. All right, don't do anything. I'll take care of the hotels because I, I was just asking him, which should I, you know, make a reservation? No, don't, don't worry, he says, because if you're going to come with me, you stay with the same hotel. So we'll make the reservations. And I said, well, from then on, it was just like, we went there and I felt like everything is there for me. Like, he always was so nice to me. He picked me up, let me groom in his grooming room, stay with him, travel, and I just follow Peter wherever he went. And that was the most important thing I ever done. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I know, I understand. Uh, it's just, like, wonderful. So that is the... You know, life went by fast. I mean, I love it. And, um, uh, you know, everywhere, you know, with wonderful people. And, 
he was just great. And uh, so uh, from then on, it, it was just like um, every time we go east, I go to him. And uh, that's, you know, always have such a great relationship with him. And he's such a great guy and and uh, always gave me good advice. And, and I mean, I can't tell you how many times he's like, uh, I remember I tell the story. What well, that is you telling me about Sadie, so I got a little water off of the. Track, but <laughs> okay. but um, I knew with Mrs. Uh, Mr. Mustard work because they were George's clients, and uh, you know they always were work in Chicago International, and they'll come by. And we'll usually set up with Peter, so George is somewhere there, and Peter always really. You know, he loved the monsters. And uh, um, so I always get to say hello to them, like, because I was there, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, a, um, that's how I knew, you know, that's what I knew. All of a sudden, uh, after um, I shot a couple of dogs and I was in my own with the first CD, I got, let me see, uh, I got a phone call from Mrs. Mussel. And she called me, and I was in Santa Barbara Dog Show. And it was just right before we put all our dogs out, you know, like after we show them, get them all out again before you feed them, and uh, to get them all good. So, I'm in the middle of telling everybody, put this one here, put this one there, walk that one, you know, whatever we do. And uh, so the phone rings. And it's Mrs. Mosser. Well, I didn't know it was Mrs. Mosser. So she started telling me about this. She has this dog that wants me to show. And, and I just said, look, uh, do you mind if I talk to you in another time because we're in the middle of putting these dogs out? Oh, okay, honey, don't worry about it. Call me when you have time. So, I really didn't realize, you know, it's not there was somebody calling to show Scotty. So, a couple of weeks go by, and I never call her back. How dumb of me, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, so, all of a sudden, Peter calls me, and he says, Gabriel, uh, uh, I was talking to Amelia Musser, and he was telling me that uh, he called you, but you never returned. You said you were going to call, and, and you were not like, like if there's like if something wrong, or, you know, kind of like didn't know what happened, why he didn't call back. So if, if I can, like, let you know or something. Well, I'm like, what? I said, I didn't know Mrs. Mosser called me. I said, yeah, he said he talked to you. And you, I said, well, Peter, I didn't have no idea who he was. I was just thought it was some other person that was going to call me later. <laughs> anyway, so that was how I got to <laughs> the beginning of that. Then uh, she, I talked to her, and she told me that... Uh, she had this beautiful bitch that she loved and a lot of people liked. And uh, if I was, if I was interested, she will send it to me. And if I like her, I can show it for her. And I said, oh, okay, well, sure. You know, so he sends me the dog. And um, that was uh, maybe 2006 or seven, somewhere there. She was like 18 months old. And um, I just started working on it. And, you know, um, um, we, uh, I was kind of like so scared because, you know, there is, there is this important client that was George Schwartz's client. And now I had to deal with the fact that showing this beautiful doll for this person and, and it's so important. And, you know, it's just, it becomes not about 
anything but to do a great service for these people. You know, sometimes it's like I show this and I want that, but I never feel like that. You know, I just feel like it's a big responsibility that you get up and you are, you are honored because, you know, you, you know, the only person can do it. So I was really shocked with that. So I was really careful and, and I started showing her a little bit here to learn. And, uh, um, I started figuring it out, you know. One of the things I said is, I'm not going to go in my knees and hold the tail and put the lid in my mouth and bathe it. That, that, I'm not going to do that. Because every time I see the Scottish people at that time, everybody go in the ring and go in their knees, whatever is wet or not, or whatever it is, and hold the dog together. And, and to me, it just took so much away from the dog. And I just, I'm, I said, I'm, not, I'm just going to stand. So one of the breeders says to me, well, good luck. Because scatties are all over the place. <laughs> you, you have to hold them for many reasons, not just to stack them. You know, it's because they're just, you know, feisty and, you know, they want to do their own thing and they don't want you to tell them what to do. So... I said, you know, I really wanted to show this dog like you can show any other dog. You know, I don't want to put any conditions with, with the breed because, you know, you just have to figure them out. Sure. So so I did my best and uh, I was very lucky and she, I didn't really have to touch her much and stuff. So I, I see now that people, they don't go down so much, you know. I always feel that, uh, um, and I showed her in, uh, took it to Crops, and and it was a big class of champions, and I had Sadie, so everybody is in the ground, and I'm standing with Sadie, and Maripi comes from the crowd, and he goes, Gabriel, Gabriel, yes? I'm like, why are you calling me? I'm in the middle of showing the dog, right? Go down, go down. I'm like, what do you mean go down? Yeah, yeah, just hold her down. And I'm like, okay, so I hold her down. The judge goes by. Then she comes later and he says, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to tell you, but you look so different. Standing by yourself there, it looked like something is wrong. He says, so you do whatever you want. But I, it just felt like, you know, all these people that used to do one way, and you do it all the way, you might even might, might not be good for you. I says, but <laughs> you do whatever. I just feel like I have to tell you. Anyway, so that was that was you know one of the things about standing on, with the Scotty. But uh, uh, anyway, so she uh, she was wonderful, and you know she did so well, and and I learned so much with her. Uh, also because I felt so honored and so much responsibility and wanted to do a good job badly for these people. Um, I really wanted to do the best I can. So again, Rick has always been there for me. So he's uh, kind of like start not feeling so good health wise. So he goes and he says, uh, calls me back. He says, I heard you have a very nice Scotty. And I said, okay. And uh, he says, I want to see it. I want to see the dog. I said, well, I said, I, I'm not having it out there yet, but uh, I guess I can take it and take it to those forward shows and you'll be there. Yeah, sure. So he, I'll take the dog. He's not entered, just to show him. So he looks at her. She's like, he can't, you cannot make him wait for anything. You know, whatever it was, a picture or something had to be doing whatever he wanted to see it. So I'm in the middle of showing you, you gotta bring her quick. You gotta bring her quick. I'm like, Rick, I'm no, no, no. Just do it quick. I just want to see it. <laughs> okay. So I take the dog, move it on and back. You there all of that. Look at her, bait her. She looked at me, and Rick says to me, okay, kid, 
you ready? This dog, you want to win everything with her. You want to win with Mister. You want, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I hardly wanted to know how to show it, you know. And this guy is telling me I want to win with Mister. I mean, I, I know it's like you like me, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know who who thinks that, right? Exactly. <laughs> so 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 I'm like, uh, and now I'm like, is this for real or something? I mean, so anyway, just get on it. And uh, like Rick, everything he did, he had tremendous passion for dogs. And he, if you will show him something, he'll be calling you that week all the time just to talk about that and what's happening. So nothing changed. He calls me back the next day after I got home. Gabriel, I was thinking, I really, you know, I knew who Bob Bortos was and that he won and because he's so famous with this uh, bingo dog that he won uh, the garden and he was a very famous. And all the Scotty people, they know who it is. He is really the, I guess, the most famous dog in, in the breed. So I always hear stories, you know, like, Dog people would like to hear the story and talk about other handlers or dogs that won or famous. So I knew about it, but I, you know, this is a long time ago. And and he started telling me, Rick, you know, I just wish I would have just loved if my friend Bob Bartos will see this dog. That would have been great. And I'm like, well, you know, I mean, you know, it's like, uh, I, I would like to, but in, in the meantime, I'm thinking, you know, I'm just, just telling me his old passed away friend, he would have liked for me to show him. I said, well, unfortunately, you know, we can't do that. And he says, what do you mean? Yeah, I mean, he, he's dead. How are we going to show it? He says, no, he's not dead. I say, he's not? Well, at that time, I was like 98 years old. And uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know he was alive. I didn't know nothing about it. But he's always, you know, French, you know, be friendly with Rick. So I said, really, Rick? He says, yeah. He says, I'm going to call him and ask him that he needs to see this bitch and meet you. And I'm like, if somebody has that, I had to do, I had to go, right? I mean, this is like incredible. So we're getting ready to go to another show. And he calls me back later on and says, you know, he says you can come anytime you want. And I'm thinking, I'm going to this specialty or something. I said, what a wonderful thing will be for me to go see him and he can give me some kind of tips, you know, and how to handle it. So I went to visit him. Get it, put her in a bag and took her over there. Meet Danny Sacco as they leave that way. And we both went to visit him. We had a great time with him. I mean, we like spent one day, but it was like half an hour. You know, it was so fast. And and he was so incredibly, I cannot tell you how much he opened my eyes. He's just like telling me all these things about balance and uh, too much hair here and this and make this, but never telling me how to do it. He's always just saying it. There was important, but never ever mentioned you had too much beard on her or, or whatever, right? Just kind of giving me a, a explanation and what he know. So it was really great. And Danny and I were like just drooling. Now he's a Scotty guy. His parents are Scotty people. And he was just in heaven too. So we had a great time. We went to lunch. Uh, and that was my beginning with my relationship with him. And since then on, every week he'll be calling me. Oh, I call him. And he wanted to know how did she did. Well, I can show you, I can tell you for sure that if it wasn't for that, 
I will never be able to do what I did with Sadie. It's so important. Everything, how to show it, what to do. For example, um, he says, how do you, what do you do for bait? I said, well, you know, she likes chicken. But she really likes it? Oh, yeah, she goes crazy with it. He said, well, don't feed it. I said, what do you mean? I said, oh, save your bait. Give her something that she doesn't like that much. And I'm like, okay. I said, uh, all right, well. He said, yeah, because that way when she really needs something else, you have something else. And he'll be telling me things like that, you know, about Scotty's more than anything. I mean, we all have a, our own sense of how to show the dogs and, and know the dog, but he was like always ahead because he knew the behavior of the breed, you know? So he says, when you give her something that she likes, just do it. Then... If we start not really liking it a little bit, take it away before she doesn't like it. And then go to this one. And then you can go back and forth. But don't never let her not like it. You know? And I'm like, okay. So we did that. And and um, then it's like, you know, you got to put it like this. Use this kind of lead. The Scottish don't like to be pinched behind the ears. You have to have... Rescos will pull the ear. So he gives me this little, she, he said, French collar. It's like a little tiny pet collar, but it was very thin, made out of whale skin. <laughs> and uh, that's what he used in all his studies. He says, because it's like a ring that holds the dog's head without pinching the ears behind. So he uses his ears really good. I mean, he's... He always tell me, you, you, if you want ears forward, I mean, everything that it is about the dogs, I got it from him. He was so good. And um, one time we were in the Chicago International, and she was the top dog then. And he already told me, mentioned to me, you know, one time she's going to get tired of it, and she's going to start being scotty. And you're going to have to do something else. Just just let me know when you feel it's coming. I said, okay. So we were there. I called him from Chicago. And I said, you know, it's a very important group. And it's a really good smooth here that is doing a lot of winning. And uh, I really don't want her to show back. So he says... Uh, and it's not baiting very well. I mean, she is, but, you know, it's not quite there. He says, well, all right, so um, when you move... Oh, she's not using the ears. That's what I was saying. She kind of put in the ears back and come back to the judge. She did not want to look, you know? And um, he says, okay, you know, this is what Scott is doing. He says, when you do, move it in a loose lead. What do you mean move it in a loose lead? I never move it in a loose lead. He said, just move it in a loose lead. She'll go. But don't look at her. Ignore her. Just move her. He says, you know what they do? I'm going to tell you after you do it, what, what he did. So anyway, she so said, just do it. Just trust me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. He said, you don't even have to bait her. All right. So I'm like, I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? It's like, this is too important, and I need to make sure there's no mistake. So I'm going, I can feel she's not doing it. I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to move it in a little bit. So I stop a little bit, run around, drop the lead. There you go. She just started going. Boom. Come back the same way. And the ears are up. Now, she doesn't know. It's like, she, she, you can tell that the dog is like, you're not holding me. And he started looking up to me with the ears up. And she's just like tracking, almost like wants to play with me. So he comes back and I stop in front of it. And, and, and I remember he said, don't look at her. Let him, you know, she doesn't know what's going on. So I don't look at her. I'm just standing like ignoring her. What she does, she started looking at me, ears up, barking at me, and going in circles, like looking at <laughs> my face. Like, I'm like, 
how does this man come up with all these things? Well, you know, you do it for so long and you take care of these dogs and you get into the dog's behavior. That's how you learn, you know? And uh, it was like, I can tell you many stories like that. Wow. He really was an incredible man. So, and Rick always was there, you know? He's always like telling me these and that. So I was very lucky uh, to have somebody that cared about what I was doing. And I think also they like that I gave them respect and I was so eager to listen and love the same, share the same passion, which I think is very important. Yeah. I think if you always have to have a mentor, somebody to look up to and be making proud, it's just like your parents, you know, you, that's, you have to do it. You have to make your parents proud. And, and, and that's the same thing. And I think that's very important with, and, uh, you know, I think it's a little bit of a, um, things are changing a little bit and, uh, it's not so much that exposure, you know, mm -hmm. to do that. And, uh, but it is really, I think is the most important thing, a mentor and respect your mentors and, you know, um, uh, Peter was such a great person to me and not just as a kind person, he never had any interest in anything. One time, you know, after Montgomery, he always had all these people visiting him and take care of him. And I mean, he was just like from one end to the other. It like he knew everything. And I'm like, Peter, how do you do this? I mean, <laughs> you have had to remember all of this. Oh, Gabriel, this, this was a very nice man. And this one, you always have something. You know, always everybody was nice or a good person. Or, or he's a wonderful mother or he's a wonderful father. I mean, always. And, and you know, uh, um, he was absolutely uh, the highlight of my life with, in dogs when I was, uh, you know, going with doctors with him when I went east. And, and Rick, I mean always in the phone and uh, always, I mean, what do you have now? What, 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 what kind of wire do you have? And I've shown pictures and it's just like a little kid. It never stopped. And it was so contagious, you know, and uh, have also the opportunity of being, uh, you know, before Montgomery in Peter's place and you know, George will, war will come in. And I mean, so many other people and, you know, Rick was always there. They have these three guys there trimming dogs and next to you. I mean, they're all talking dogs. You just there listening and watching what they do. And, uh, it's an incredible experience. And, and, uh, you know, I was very lucky to, to get into that. But uh, it was such a wonderful times in dogs and quality and, and, and in a way to respect, a lot of respect to, you know, handlers and stuff. So Thanks, Gabe. Looking forward to part two. If you like what you're seeing here, make sure you press the like, share, and subscribe button. If you want to get a hold of me, get a hold of me at dogshowtips at gmail.com or just find out what's happening in Will's world at willalexander.net. And don't forget about the dog show drive every Thursday with myself and Mr. Cavanaugh. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye now.